Uh, no, I didn't. The first time I talked to her, uh, his mom was when we got on the bus after the game. Guys, I'd, I would, I'd ask you both. I'm doing, I'm doing, I mean, I'm hanging in there, but I'm doing a lot better now since all the updates were coming out, you know what I mean? So since everything that's been coming out since he's been, you know, giving signals and everything like that, so I'm doing a lot better now. Mitch, I would ask. It's a huge relief, you know what I mean? Like, the, I think the worst part about, like, everything is the unknown, you know what I mean? Like, us not knowing, like, his status or anything like that, which everybody did a great job of giving us updates and everything like that. But, you know, just as a player, as that being our brother and him being so close, it's just like, you know what I mean? You're just wondering, like, is he going to be all right in the end? So, like, once we got updates and once we got, you know, feedback, you know, it just started to make us feel a little better, for sure. Mitch, I would ask you the same question in terms of, the progress he's made over the last 24 hours. We were able to talk to the University of Cincinnati doctors uh, today. How did you receive that information and what's been your reaction to it? Yeah, I think it's just been one of those fluid situations. Um, the team's done a great job of kind of keeping us in the fold before, uh, you know, unfortunately before you guys. Um, so uh, for us, like, you, you know, we get in the Zoom updates during team meetings, which were awesome. It's really cool. Uh, you, you don't realize how much you need that until it happens. Um, it's just been such a fluid situation. The, the information sharing throughout the departments has been phenomenal, and uh, we've never felt like we were behind in that department. So um, in, in, in those regards, we were very thankful for uh, everyone doing you know, the best they could uh, with something that was you know, so volatile and just kind of changing at the minute. Guys, what was your reaction to uh, Kamar's dad? 2007, I was on the field uh, Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it was just, it, it was one of those things that um, we were kind of writing the script on it as you went. Um, you know, everyone had different sorts of information. Uh, it's, you know, it was kind of chaos at any given moment. When we were able to get to that locker room, I think uh, a lot of things happened. One was we were able to collect ourselves and help each other out in the confines of that locker room. Uh, also have the whole team in a confined space that uh, we could have discussions, conversations, not only between ourselves, but then, you know, coach putting us in a position to ultimately make a decision. Um, yeah, I, I just think it, it, there was no way in hell that we were ready to go out there and play a game. Um, you know, even if there were just a few guys who weren't ready to play, which there were way more, you know what I mean? Uh, you can't, to play this game, as you know, the where you have to be mentally to be on the field, not only for your, yourself and your well-being, but for others around you, um, it, it just would have done a disservice to everyone, and, and there was just no chance. So um, we're very thankful for that opportunity and uh, kind of collectively come together and, and do that. Yeah, it's just there was no way in hell that you could do it then. How can you fast forward six days to manage that and, and do it? Yeah. Um, not only the updates we've gotten from the family, uh, from the medical staff, um, also just processing, you know, naturally processing this, getting my, you know, with family, teammates, um, just taking it moments at a time. You know, you have dialogue with yourself as well. Uh, and through that, um, I think the biggest thing is just hearing from the family and hearing how he's progressed has really put, uh, I mean, to say a smile on our faces would be an understatement. We were we were as elated as you possibly could be as a team. It was it was a really cool moment, um, and then being able to put the pads on, or you know, being able to do a little bit of football today was very therapeutic for a lot of guys. And, and uh, you know, it's still one of those situations that we'll keep going, progressing. Each person, like Coach had said before, is going to kind of process this in a different manner. Um, and that's nothing wrong with that. You know, emotions might be delayed. Emotions might hit you at different times. And, um, you know, we're just there for each other. And, and everyone here has got a really good support system. For, for both of you, just what you just said, like, you're there for each other. Can you define kind of what that means? I, I, one of the images that's burning in my head is Tredavious White just, like, put his head on your chest. I mean, you're, you're consoling a teammate at the worst possible moment of his time. 
both of you, just how did you, how do, how are you there for each other? What are, can you share some of those? I mean, <clears throat> yeah, I just feel like it's like it's the bond we have, we've all created. You know what I mean? Like every day in the locker room, it's never a dull moment. So like it's it's just with everyone. You know what I mean? We're always all here for each other. Like if it's about like anything, it could be about anything. You know what I mean? We're always you know what I mean? Are you okay? Like we're around each other so much. Like we notice the smallest change in your your behavior like every single day. So like just that bond that we built over the time. You know, it just give us. That you know that that advantage to just be there for each other every single time, like tough times like this go down for sure. Dave, you heard from the doctors today, and they said that the first thing Jamar said was "hit you young." Mm -hmm. What's your reaction to hearing that? I mean, I really wouldn't expect him to ask anything else, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because uh, uh, I just know like just what type what type of person he is, man. He's a true warrior, man. He's a he's a fighter. Uh, he's always gonna he's always gonna come out you know with, with some type of joke or whatever no matter the how severe the situation is he always has a joke or you know I know the first first thing he'll say to me when he get back is something crazy I, I just know it I, I can't wait for it honestly that's what that's what I'm really waiting for but you know what I mean that's just the type of person he is man he's all he always wants to win he's a true fighter and he's a warrior for sure. <laughs> Uh, I mean, uh, I just, I just remember, I just remember, like, as I, as they were putting me into the, into the, uh, the, the ambulance, uh, him saying, "I love you, D Jack," and like, like I just remember that distinct voice. There was a, uh, the whole team was saying it. You know what I mean? But I, I just, I just remember that distinct voice in my head, and like that, that replayed with me on the whole way to the hospital. So, uh, you know, just. Those different, th just the bond we have. Like I, I, I look at pictures now to this day. Again, this is not about me. You know what I mean, this is all about Demar. But like I just look at pictures today, and I see him standing like right there, like literally like hovering over me. You know what I mean, as I'm as I'm getting carted off. So like that just goes to show you like the type of bond that me and him have, and uh, just how we're always there for each other. Nick, what stands out to you about the leadership of your head coach in those moments? Just, I mean, which we knew about Coach before is humanity. I mean, the the fact that, um, you know, he's here to coach football. We're here to play football. Um, he's here to delegate certain things to, if you want to call subordinates or whatever. But when it comes to player safety, our personal lives, uh, he's been unwavering in this, but this is kind of, you know, in the most paramount time, doubled down on it was just the fact that he, he's, he, he's a human being. Um, he has our safety and, and well-being uh, in the forefront of his mind at all times. And, uh, you know, when the stakes were at its highest, not only, you know, for football but for a young man's life, that, uh, you know, there was no thought about football rather than and rather just the welfare of his team and, of course, tomorrow. Can you take us back to the locker room and the dis maybe the discussion or how did it come about that you understood that no one was going back out there that yeah, it was, it was so fluid, kind of just like we had talked about earlier. It was, you know, it was kind of chaos in the field. Um, we got in the locker room. Emotions were still very high. Uh, it was, it was still a very, um, an emotionally charged area. I think guys were just consoling one another and kind of having this open dialogue. Uh, we were kind of coming down a little bit, still processing everything. Um, you know, it, you know, I feel for the guys in the defense and stuff. You know, you know not only is this you know, in their position group, uh, they were there, they were on the field. Um, so every position group, every person who's got a different relationship with someone in the locker room is feeling this in a different way, and that's not a bad thing. It's just the truth of it all. Um, you know, you, you see guys who are just, you know, were, were almost inconsolable, and then you ask them to perform at the highest level at a sport where you have to be mentally and physically have your wherewithal to, to not only play, but to put yourself in a position where you're not going to injure yourself further. So um, it wasn't like one person standing up kind of saying this thing. It was really uh, 
a back and forth between the coaches, the players, and, and uh, um, you know, it was pretty cool to see. Mitch, that's the second time, that's the second time you've said that in this news conference about having the wherewithal and the focus, not even from a win-loss perspective, but to essentially protect yourself and protect others during the course of an NFL football game. In light of everything that's happened, and Sean and Josh talked about, you know, the, essentially the message that, that DeMar would want you to guys go out, go, to go out and play. Um, how difficult is it to achieve the level of focus now that you need to, to to prepare for Sunday? Like I said before, you you know it was it's been so fresh for these you know 48 to 72 hours. Um, you know everyone's got their own conversations with themselves and their loved ones, and you understand as football players you assume risk on the field, but you say that and then something like this happens. Of course, you know it's going to shock you to the core. Um, but then you have that you, that guttural and visceral reaction, visceral reaction rather. You take a step back. Um, you think about it kind of just uh, objectively, and, and then you also hear. Like I can't say how paramount it was to hear from Demar and his family, or you know, Demar's family and the the medical staff, and um, that really has shed some light. And uh, you know, like I said, being on the field today. Having guys, you know, it, it was just, it felt, had some normalcy, and, and I think that was very therapeutic. Mitch, as you've been here, this organization has really prioritized mental health and making all the resources available to you guys and the entire staff and building whenever it's needed. How important has that been, not only up until this moment, but now especially after this moment? Yeah, that's a good question. I think, um, you know, we, we had talked about some people only pray when the, when, when, when something bad's happening, or some people only seek, uh, you know, this psychological help when things are at their most dire. Which sometimes is 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 the thing that thrusts you into that, and realizing that there's a whole next level in your life, or as a team, or as an individual, that you have this help. Uh, he's, you know, coach and, and their staff has been uh, very, I think, forward thinking in that regards. Uh, something that I've personally been very uh, grateful for. Um, yeah, and it, it was no surprise when he had all these people here at our disposal. Um, I think you, you know, Dan can attest, uh, you have 90 different guys in this locker room processing it in 90 different ways. You're going to have people who process it certain ways, with verbally, intrinsically, um, through hanging out with people by themselves, talking to someone. So uh, there's no right way to do it. And uh, I think that just to be able to have that opportunity well, it was really cool. I mean, it was very important, you know what I mean? Uh, he just made sure he was by my side, you know what I mean? Because he knew how uh, how significant our relationship was, you know what I mean? So uh, he just made sure he kept reaching out to me, uh, checking up to me, as well as everybody else on the team did as well. Like a lot of people know, you know what I mean, our, our history and our background. So. Uh, a lot of guys were coming up to me and, uh, you know, just making sure I was good, you know, just checking on me for sure. So I appreciate that a lot. I mean, I can't think of uh, just of a story. There's so many, there's so many. I mean, we, so many times in college and stuff like that, but, uh, just as just a person as who he is, man. He's a he's a giver. He's a a fighter. He's a warrior. Um, he's an encourager. You know I mean, uh, just a whole just for one thing, like his his Chase a Millions Foundation. Like, man, that's big. I remember like even going all the way back to college. You know what I mean? Where he wasn't allowed to you know what I mean be on the forefront of it because he was in college. You know, his dad had to take most of it. But like, it's just that's just always what he wanted to do. You know what I mean? He always wanted to give back. He's always wanted to help. Uh, he's always like looking for the next opportunity to just be a light to someone who's willing, who wants to be in our position. So like, just that's that's just him. You know what I mean? Like, just thinking of it makes me smile because I know once he gets back to himself, like he's he's going to be looking forward to helping out so many others. Oh yeah, I know. I just know he'll be like super excited. You know what I mean? Because like coming from where we come from, you know, uh, that's where he he does most of his events and stuff like that. So like just coming from where we come from, I know like it, there's a lot of people who aren't as privileged to 
You know what I mean, just just to get the basic stuff. Like when he just did his toy drive, like a lot of those kids maybe may not have had toys. You know what I mean? If it wasn't for that drive, I mean, I don't I don't know uh, exactly, but you know, I just that's just stuff that he's he's like willing to do and he wants to do. So I can't wait to to see it happen. Yeah, I mean, it's just been great for me to see, you know what I mean? Because, like I like I referenced before, I just know, like, he's going to do so many amazing things with that, you know what I mean? I just know that, like, he, he probably has no idea about it now, but, like, once once he finds out, you know what I mean, how much money that was raised and how many people supported him, I, I know, like, those thoughts are just going to start going in his head of what he can do to help out others, you know what I mean? It, it's never about him, you know what I mean? I can tell you. From my heart, just knowing him, that I know that he'll do a lot of great things with everyone that supported in this foundation for sure. Yeah, Sean, you can't be in 15 living rooms of your teammates, but what do you think the conversations are, are like and have been like with the other players in the family? Yeah, I don't know if it's totally fair to speculate uh, what other guys are going through. That's not fair. Um, what I can assume is. Um, you know, just I, I know early on those first 24, 48 hours, I think guys spent time with each other. That was huge. Um, processing it out loud, especially guys who had gone through it together. Um, you know, I don't, I, I don't know how to totally answer that question. I, I assume that everyone's kind of going through this uh, shock and awe at first, kind of having this um, huge emotional come down. Um, and then kind of analyzing it in their own way, thinking about it, and and hopefully, uh, you know, working through it. Mitch, you know, we all know that Coach McDermott is just the ultimate player coach, and he's just always finding a way to find some inspiration and motivation to his team. What has been his message to help you guys cope with what happened? Yeah, I think the, the coolest thing about this is that more than anything, his vulnerability has been huge for us. Um, you know, this, this sport at times can be such a macho, tough man thing. And I think when you look at this team room, that we had, no one had any macho left to give. Uh, we were all just trying to uh, process this together. And, and I think he was just such a good figure to um, kind of see how he was coping with it, his vulnerability, his emotions at times, which he had already t spoken about kind of gave us the opportunity to just let our guard down. And I think that's the biggest thing this whole time is being able to let your guard down so you can heal and without having any wall to uh, to hold you back. Yeah, you mentioned the Yeah, one thing that Yeah, I think, you know, Coach McDermott's been talked about a lot. Um, you know, the assistant coaches have also played such a paramount role. Uh, like I'd said before, each position group might be feeling this differently. Everyone's feeling it. There's no doubt about it. But some it might have touched home a little bit more with some position groups than others. Um, I think when you, oh, when you start game planning for the Patriots, you open up with just like echoing what Sean's message was at times, which is, hey, if you need a moment, it's cool. This is, this is uncharted territory for all of us, and um, we're here for each other. You know, this season has been kind of, it's been a roller coaster of a season, not only as a community, but as a team. Um, you know, nothing can quite, you know, live, no, I don't want to say live up, but reach what this has meant to us. Um, but, you know, let your guard down if you need it, um, and guys will be there for each other. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it has been a week like in like you know, no other. I don't plan on ever having a week like this, and I pray to God I never do. Um, 
we're just figuring it out on the fly. I mean, the, the fact that uh, there's a game coming up Sunday is is a blessing in a little bit, and at the same time has been daunting. Um, trying to balance both being a football player and your emotions and just kind of you know, being a human being living in this moment. Um, I'll tell you Monday how it goes, because uh, we're still kind of figuring it out. Okay, I had a question about Jamar. Um, he had to step up in a big way football-wise this year. Um, can you tell me what was, how did he approach that? What was his attitude about? What did he say to you about his expanded role? Uh, well, I could definitely say he approached it like a pro. Uh, you know what I mean? Every, every single day he came in with the mindset ready to work. You know what I mean? He never hesitate on asking questions of older guys like Micah and Poe. Those, were, those guys were always in his corner. You know what I mean? He lifted him up every single day. Like he make a play or something didn't seem right. And those guys are right there as soon as he come off the field, you know, giving him pointers or whatever it may need to be, uh, whatever it, it needs to be. So. Uh, he definitely approached it like a pro, and uh, I can't wait to see him get back out there, if, if, that's, the, if that's the case. Dane, you guys go back, you know what I mean, since, since Georgia was right. And, you know, he had that message for you, and, you know, when you were going through what you were going through, I love you, DJ. Where was your mind? What, what is your message to the Miami fans? Uh, my message is that um, I'm going to always be here. You know what I mean? Uh, no matter what, no matter the situation may be, if it's – good, if it's bad, or if it's in the middle, I'm always be right here and doing everything I can to help. You know what I mean? Uh, I reached out to his family, doing whatever. I wanted to be there at the hospital with him if, if I can, but you know what I mean? That wasn't the case, but still, no matter what, I'm going to always be here. I'm going to be a brother to him. I'm going to be uh, a friend to him, uh, a friend to his parents, or just any anything that they need from me, I'm here for him for sure, 100%. They're very special, I can tell you that. I mean, they're super strong. I mean, just look at everything that they have went through in the past few days, and you know what I mean? I, I don't think I've seen a tear out of either one of them. You know what I mean? So that just goes to show you how, how strong they are. And I know they're super supportive. I mean, I don't, I don't remember a game that they haven't been at since Jamar wasn't even playing. You know what I mean? Like, when he wasn't playing, they were still at the game, still travel, and they're, they're always there. Like, he's always making sure he makes it a point to go see them. I mean, he probably see them right after the game, but it's just special because like when you're on the field at that moment, like, you know what I mean? Like when you got your mom and your dad over there, you know I mean, just waiting for you to come over and like, it just gives you, it just gives you a little more, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just a special moment. So like they're, they're bond and like everything that they do together, it doesn't go unnoticed. And as well as his little brother, you know what I mean? His little brother plays a big role in his life and I know how much his little brother means to him and I know how much he means to his little brother. So. I can't wait till their relationship get, relationship gets rekindled as well. Hey, we guys talk about what it's going to be like in the post game show. You're leading the band, the emotion, and how do you guard against Nick? Because it's attacking a guy with the diagnosis that Paul started, and allowing all that to kind of overwhelm you as you're trying to play right now. Yeah, I think everyone will be looking forward to getting that first snap out of the way. Uh, I think just in a regular game, there's nothing more nerve wracking than national anthem. Just your the adrenaline's high, the anticipation. Um, now that might be speculation, that it might just be me. Um, but I, I think, you know, of course the fan outpour, no doubt will be tremendous for DeMar and for this team. And, um, you know, I think once we start getting into the flow of it, it'll feel like football again. And I, and I think people are really welcoming that, um, hopefully that, that experience. And, and if some, some people don't feel that way, that's okay. You know, it's just one of those things that we're just going to kind of ride the roller coaster per se and see and see how this plays out for a lot of guys. And um, it'll be kind of an ever evolving situation. And it just seems like what you're going to do is kind of jump into the role of being sort of the right instead of being the right and not happy or, or even how you're just talking about the situation now. I guess two part one, where did that come from for you? And two, have you given yourself time to process it yourself? Yeah, I think you're giving me more props than I probably deserve in this <laughs> instance. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's a twofold thing. You can't hide the emotions on the field. 
Um, you know, part of me wishes that that moment between Trey and I was in the locker room. Um, you know, part of it, you know, I don't know if it's fair to either of us for that, but at the same time, it, it did show the world that how, you know, what kind of situation this was. Um, so it's a double edged sword uh, because the stakes were so high that you, you guys had no choice but to, uh, you know, find their true emotions uh, just because that's a brother on the field for a lot of these guys and for all of us, you know. So um, I'm just trying to do my job as, 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 a, as a guy on this team. I, don't, I, I think there's a lot of guys who stood up in, in a way that, even if they're not captains, played such a paramount and pinnacle role in a lot of guys coping with this. And, um, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, even after this game, it's not going to be, you know, the snap of the finger, we're all good. It's going to be one of those things that we kind of grind through. And um, if anything in this, you know, this season has just been a one after the other, this kind of domino effect of, of things that bring a team together. And this is just one of those, another one of those moments that, um, although the stakes at its highest, uh, will just be one of those things. Wouldn't want, to, wouldn't want to be anywhere else, I could tell you that. You know what I mean? Uh, just the way this team has come together, not even just supporting me for, forget me, you know what I mean? Just a, the support of everyone, you know what I mean? The support of the players, the coaches, the family. The, I mean, my family at home are getting text messages, you know what I mean? Uh, just just wondering how he's doing and everything like that. So just the, the support of everyone, uh, just the way we've all come together, you know what I mean? The, nobody pointed fingers, nobody, you know what I mean? Um, you know what I mean, got they just it was just a, a total amount of support from everyone, top to bottom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I mean it's been like that it's for since college. You know what I mean? Like every time. We left each other, or every time we would go on the field, like before in, in pregame warmups, we're always like finding each other. It doesn't matter what moment it is, but we always make sure we tell each other we love each other, like before the game. So, like, that's just been in his character, and I'm sure that has a lot to do with his mom and dad, you know what I mean, the way he was raised. So, I mean, it's, 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 as much as I can remember, it's been like that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.